Hi guys, so Heidi here, and I am gonna show you five really awesome tricks to make your fashion flats more beautiful. All of these are super simple to do, and each one you can accomplish in way under two minutes each. All right, let's get started. If you haven't already, go ahead and grab the free download file that's linked below the video, and it's a pair of denim jeans, and I've created two copies on my artboard because I wanna use one as the before, and then we'll show what the after looks like after we've done these few techniques. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna zoom in here on the one on the right, which is gonna be my after. And the first thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna start with my uh, paintbrush tool. So I'm gonna come over to my brush panel, and I'm gonna open up the artistic panel, uh, chalk, charcoal, and pencil brushes. From here, there's a couple that I really like to use in here. One is the Charcoal Rough, and the other is the Charcoal Soft. You can play around and use whatever brushes you think look good, but we'll go ahead and use the Charcoal Rough to start. So with the brush, again, I'm just gonna draw some brush strokes here. Right where there might be some creases and some sort of highlights and lowlights in my pair of jeans. Now that doesn't look very good, so let's go ahead and fix that. I'm gonna select all of these. And what I need to do is just change the stroke weight. So I'll come over to stroke, and I'm gonna pump this down to about 0.25. That looks much better. And I'm also gonna change the opacity at the top here to about 5%. Now that's starting to look a lot more realistic. I can move these around as I like. And let's go ahead and add a few more. So I'm just gonna grab my brush again. And now once I have my brush grabbed, since the last object I had selected was the 0.25 and 5% opacity, that's what my brush will now draw with. So I can just easily draw with my brush and those will be the settings that I already have defined. Okay, so just again, start to add some texture there where you might see it in a real pair of jeans. Now we'll come down, and I also think that we would have some kind of on the knees, right, where there's some scrunching. So I'm gonna draw those. And you just kind of freehand this. I mean, there's no perfect science. You can spend a little bit of time kind of fussing and making it as perfect or as freehand and organic as you want. I'm just kind of going fast here for the demo. Um, but again, it is really easy, just clicking and dragging with the mouse to add some texture lines. Okay, so that's already looking much better than our flat sketch over here, just a little bit of texture. The next thing I wanna do is I actually wanna add some kind of scrunching around the knees and the ankles because in reality, these jeans wouldn't be so stri straight and hard edged. So I'm gonna select the sketch with my selection tool. I'm gonna to grab the pencil tool, okay? And we'll zoom in and I'll work on the ankle first. Now, the first thing I want you to notice is with the pencil tool, you'll notice when you have it kind of anywhere away from artwork, there's an asterisk next to the pencil tool. As you hover close to the path, the asterisk goes away. Once the asterisk goes away, that means if you kind of click and drag right there, that's the path that you're actually gonna be affecting. If you have the asterisk, it means you're gonna start drawing from scratch. We don't wanna draw from scratch, we wanna use it to manipulate this path here. So with the pencil tool, I'll hover until the asterisk goes away and then I'll just kind of click and drag. And I accidentally got a little bit too close to that dashed line there, so I, I'm gonna hit undo and I, I'll, I can show you how and why that happened. You'll notice I got there and I see the minus sign next to the pencil tool. That means I'm gonna be connecting with that path. That's not what I wanted, so I undid that. So again, just hover until you see the asterisk gone and then kind of draw some squiggles to add a little bit of dimension. Okay, so we'll do it for this side too. And then I'll select this side of the pant and add a little bit of movement. Just some sort of scrunching, right? That was maybe a little bit severe, so I'm gonna redo that one. You can go over this as many times as you want. Okay, now we'll come up to the knees and we'll add a little bit of movement there. Okay, so again, not a perfect science. We're just really freehanding this. And, you know, sometimes the less you fuss over it, the better it comes out. You can kind of over tweak this stuff a lot. But then once you zoom out, you're like, oh, you know what, actually that looks pretty good. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is add a little bit of shading in the inside. So I do like to add sort of just one level darker 
of white, meaning a really, really light gray, on the inside of the garment. So in this sketch, it's the inside of the pant here, the inside of the waistband that you can see. On a blouse, it would be inside the neck. So I have this drawn as a separate shape. I'm gonna select that, and I can do that without having to ungroup or enter into isolation mode by grabbing my direct selection tool. So with that tool selected, I'll select just this one shape, and I'll come over to the fill color here, and I'll just double click on this, and I'm actually just gonna input a value of five into the K. So it's zero C, zero M, zero Y, and five K, which is black. So it'll just be 5% gray. I'll go ahead and click OK, and that adds a little bit of depth to that shape there. Now we'll zoom out, and we can start to see how much more alive this sketch over on the side's coming. Now the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of this, and I'm gonna group it. So I'm gonna choose Object Group. The sketch was grouped to begin with, but I didn't have some of these texture lines that I just drew inside of that group, so I wanted to add those. So now I can select the whole sketch, which is grouped, and I'm gonna come over to the Appearance panel, which is under Window Appearance. And from here, I'm gonna click the drop down menu and I'm gonna choose add a new stroke. Now right away, what that's gonna do is add a one point stroke to everything on my sketch, which looks absolutely horrible. That's okay, we're gonna fix that in one second. So I'm gonna select the denim sketch and I'm gonna click the stroke somewhere, not right on the word stroke, but somewhere over here where there's just blue. I'm gonna click and drag this, and I wanna drag it right below the contents. So as soon as I see that dark line appear right under the contents, that's where I wanna release that stroke. What that does is it adds the stroke around the contents of the group. So what this does is it allows you to create a really thick stroke around the outside of your sketch only. So again, I just did that by dragging it under the contents, then I can click on the word stroke, that opens my stroke panel, and I can change the weight of that stroke very easily. Now the first thing you might notice is that you get some really sharp, jagged corners up in the edge here. That's fine, we can fix that. Select this again, open up the stroke, and all you have to do is change your corner to a round join. That'll take care of those sharp edges, and you can see we've added a really nice thick outline to our sketch. We didn't have to manually draw a whole new outline. It just added it to the entire edge of the contents of the group. Really quick trick. All right, the last thing I wanna show you is the warp effect. Now the warp effect is really cool. It can give you some really funky results. You kinda of have to play with it and tune it in, but it's really fun to play with. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll grab my sketch and I'm gonna choose Effect, Warp, and I can choose any one of these to start because it's gonna open a dialog that allows me to play around and get a preview. So I'll just choose Arc to start. Now, I wanna make sure I have the preview turned on, and with that turned on, I can play around with all the different settings. So let's just do something really severe so we can really see what this does. So I have mine set to a vertical arc and it's bending at 37%. So you can see that gives me a crazy effect. If I wanna just give this a little bit of movement, maybe I only wanna bend at 5% and it kind of just adds a little bit of movement to the body like the girl's pushing her hip to the right. Again, I can play with all the different settings in here. I can go for a horizontal arc, which is a completely different look. I can start to play with the horizontal and vertical distortion. Again, usually more subtle adjustments in this menu are a little bit better. Things between maybe one and 5%, depending on the setting. But again, you just have to play with them and see what looks good. You have a ton of options in here and you can kind of browse through all of these. Wave is cool and can give you some, let's bump this horizontal down to zero and the bend. Let's see, I'm just gonna put my cursor in here and I'm gonna click the up and down arrows on my keyboard. So wave will kind of make the whole pair of jeans wave. We'll go a little bit extreme so you can actually see what it does. We'll go ahead and click OK and click off. That was perhaps a bit too much, but you can see it kind of pulled this side forward and pushed this side back. So it almost looks like this knee is bending a little bit forward and this one's pushing back. Again, that was perhaps a bit severe. Don't worry though, we can always go back in and edit it. So if I select this, I'll open my appearance panel again, 
come up to window appearance. This is the same place where we have the thick stroke, right? If you decide later you want this to be thicker or thinner, you can always do that. We can bump it up to five right now. This is also where that effect that I just added, the warp wave lives. So I can click on this, it'll open up the warp options again, and I can drop this down to something a little bit more subtle. I can also change this if I wanna bump it back to an arc. And you know, maybe I do want the arc and I want a vertical arc of, let's say, you know, maybe just 3% is just right. So I go ahead and click OK. The point being, you can always come back in and edit this. You can also see how it looks without this on by toggling the visibility. This works very much like the layers panel if you're familiar with that. And you can also completely toss this out. So if you don't like it, you can just click on the trash can to delete that effect. But let's go ahead and see how it looks. So you can see really easily these two sketches within just, you know, barely a few minutes, I was able to take this really flat sketch and add a ton more dimension to it. I didn't have to fuss with the pen tool. I didn't have to redraw anything. Really simple tricks to kind of add a lot of dimen dimension and volume and a hand-drawn look and feel to your sketches. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. I'm so Heidi. Bye-bye.